So let's see if I can get this all straight. Um, this movie rips off that these things that we think aren't intelligent are more intelligent than we give it credit for from Toy Story. The two characters that can't get along that go on a journey to find out that they can actually get along from Toy Story. The character you think is a jerk but then turns out has a tragic backstory from Toy Story 2. And the cute and cuddly character that turns out actually to be a diabolical villain from Toy Story 3. And this shouldn't be called The Secret Life of Pets, it should be called The Secret Art of Ripping Off! It's late in the time and we're gonna do it. How's it going? I am LazyDude99. Welcome to my Secret Lights of Pets review. This is the next movie by Illumination Studios, who also brought us Despicable Me, Despicable Me 2, and the Minions movie. Oh joy. Now, I don't know how many of you actually remember my thoughts on Despicable Me, but I was not a fan. I remember when it was coming out, I was thinking like, oh boy, um, it, Despicable Me is coming out in this, we got this other rip-off thing, Megamind, that's also coming out. Boo, I want to see Despicable Me. And then I saw Despicable Me, and I saw Megamind, and I like Megamind a million times more than Despicable Me. Yeah, I will take Minion over the Minions any day of the week. However, that does kind of seem the style that Illumination Studios, who works with Universal Studios, uh, is going for. They want to be the other DreamWorks company. They want to make movies that have a little bit more of adult jokes in them. They go to the bar and maybe over it a couple of times, but it still is a family fun type of film. And so let's see how they did with The Secret Life of Pets. This movie stars Louis C.K. as Max, Eric Stone Street as Duke, Kevin Hart is the villainous bunny, and a whole bunch of other characters. Uh, let me just go over the basic story. The story starts out with uh, Max, who is the dog played by Louis C.K., and he is just a dog that's growing up with his owner, Katie, and they're going out, they're having a great time, oh, they're loving it, they love each other, they're a dog and owner, and they love each other, and they hang out, and they just do owner-dog stuff. And everything is fine until one day, Katie gets another dog. Yes, a second dog. This is a humongous dog by the name of Duke. I have no idea what type of breed that is. It looks like half retriever, half bear. But anyway, naturally, Duke and Max don't really get along. They butt heads. And before you can even know what happens, they're lost in the city without their collars. Dog catchers are after them. They're in this gang with this crazy rabbit. And everything in the city is either after them or trying to kill them. Along the way, a dog next door by the name of Gidget, she gets a whole bunch of the other animals and they go looking for him in order to try to save him before Katie gets home. So as I said in the beginning of this, the, the, the fact that this movie is taking like everything it can from the Toy Story franchise franchise is so apparently obvious. I mean, sure, the animals don't freeze when the humans enter the room or anything like that, but the animals are obviously more intelligent than the humans know. They can talk. They don't, when, yeah, of course, when the humans look at them, all they hear is barking, which, you know, I prefer. Like, when you ever have a, a movie series or anything that has dogs can actually speak and talk, but they just don't uh, let humans know, that is always stupid. It doesn't have to be dogs. They can do it with bees, and it's still stupid. But anyway, the dogs will bark, 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 and the humans are like, oh, who wants a treat? Let me start with the positive of this film. The animation is actually really good. There's an op The opening scene of this movie starts with like an overview shot over New York, and I felt like, wow, this is really good. The animation is on point. Like they, they do exaggerate the city skyscrapers, so they look like way taller than they would ever be, but... I think that's done intentional because we're always trying to see things from the animal's point of view from there looking up so the city looks like this humongous thing. And there are a couple of laughs in this film. Kevin Hart plays this crazy bunny and uh, I'm not usually a fan of Kevin Hart in movies. <laughs> you didn't think I was going to say that, did you? No, like uh, His stand-up is, is fine, uh, maybe a little too crude for my taste, but you know, it's fun, it's funny. But I have never seen anything in any movies that made me laugh. And he played a, a crazed bunny, and it was pretty funny. Pretty funny bunny. It's always a good go-to thing where it's just like, you can have a, such a soft and fluffy thing be a total menacing mastermind. 
I would probably have found it funnier if I didn't already see this exact same thing in Hoodwinked. By the way, if anyone wants to know, my Hoodwinked uh, review is taken down and uh, I accidentally deleted it off my computer, so it's gone forever. Sorry about that. But I mean, I kind of still find Andy Dick the more hilarious evil bunny mastermind, but that's just me. I think the biggest problem with this film, however, is it's really a supporting cast is very lackluster. I mean, there's tons of characters and nothing really did differentiate them. I just saw this movie 20 minutes ago. And uh, let's go through the characters, see if I remember their names. Max, Gidget, Duke, Katie, Wiener Dog, Pitbull, Evil Rabbit? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. There's nothing really to differentiate, like, the Wiener Dog and the Pitbull. What's the difference between their characters? Beats me! In fact, if you really think about it, they don't do anything in this whole movie when they go on the mission to save Max. They don't do... Okay, the, the wiener dog has kind of like one scene, but like, uh... Falcon, this, this Falcon character, does nothing, really. He flies around, gets some information, and that's it. He could have left the film, nobody would have been the wiser. The cat... Uh, oh, I remember the cat. Chloe. Yeah, okay. Remember that one. The cat is comic relief, so it has a purpose in the in the stuff. But it's like, that's what they all are? But they're all, like, the same? This little bird does nothing. Not one moment does this bird have to, that it actually contributes to the story. Both of those dogs do nothing. They don't contribute anything. If we're looking at the movie that ripped off the most, Toy Story, I know who Ham, Mr. Potato Head, is. I know who they are, and I know what is different with their characters. Mr. T Potato Head is like a little bit of a grump. Ham is a little bit of our sarcastic know-it-all. It's like he's a loyal dog. Rex is a bit of neurotic. But for all of this supporting cast, they're just dogs and cats, and that's it. Now, am I saying that this movie is awful? Not really. I, I would say that I was relieved that there's no minions in this film until I saw the, uh, <laughs> the opening short, which was just minions doing stupid stuff. I'm not going to say it again. The minions are not funny. But I think the biggest problem is our, our two main characters. We got Max and we got Duke. Neither of them are really good dogs. When they first meet each other, a Duke basically threatens Max. He's like, yo, you don't want to, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Because I get like, Argh. He's like, yeah, he's like, basically threatening, I could bite you and tear you into shreds. And I'm like, oh, man. It doesn't make him a really likable character. They better redeem him later on for that. And Max does this thing where he's like, Oh, look, I just knocked all the stuff on the floor. And is she going to think I did that? No, she's going to think you did that. Because I'm the housebroken dog that's never done this in my life. And you're the new, loud, rambunctious dog. So you better do what I say or else I'm going to make your life a living hell. Not in as much words, but basically he does that, basically. And I'm like, okay, I don't really like you anymore. You're an awful dog. And then Duke grabs Max and throws him in a dumpster and wants to leave him behind. I'm like, well, now I don't like you anymore. And, you know, there's this thing where you, your characters have to go on the journey, right? And uh, if, if they don't like each other at the beginning, they have to go through the journey to, you know, reach each other on level ground and like each other at the end. Well, they go on the journey, they reach level ground, they like each other by the end, but I have no idea why! Taking a look back to the movie that they ripped off, Toy Story, it's very clear that both of these characters, Woody and Buzz, have to learn something in order to grow and to be able to connect each other as friends and become friends. Buzz has to realize that he is a toy! You know, he's delusional, and once he realizes that, you know, he has, he's able to meet Woody on a, on his level. But Woody has to get off his high horse and get off all of his jealousy and realize that he might not always be Andy's favorite toy and realize that he has to do what's best for Andy, not what's best for himself. And when he realizes that, then they both can reach each other on a level that they can be friends at. These characters just go through stuff, other animals chasing them, running through, eating hot uh, sausages in a sausage factory, which turns into like a drug trip for absolutely no reason 
And I'm just like, what? What? You know, like, there, there's movies that can do this, the Dumbo Elephants on Parade and whatnot, where it's just like, wow, this is trippy. But I'm like, this is just... Somebody was on drugs doing this thing. I have no idea why we're doing this. This is just messed up. I felt I was in that movie Sausage Party. Anywho, you might be asking, well, what do you expect? It's a kid's movie. Get over yourself. I'm like, like that's an old excuse here, people. This is, uh, you know, 2016. Animated movies have come a long way. Now, would you say, well, would you not show this to a kid then? I'm like, no, that's fine. Show this movie to your kids, they'll have fun with it. This is, in my mind, it's like the Oliver and Company of our day. You know, it's harmless. It's not gonna, you know, destroy anyone's childhood or, you know, scar anyone or be a awful, awful movie to show. It's just gonna be a movie that the kids will see, absorb, and then when they get older, completely forget about. I'll give it this, it's not annoying. Like, maybe the characters aren't as likable as they could have been, but there's nothing, no times where I'm just like, oh my gosh, shut up, shut up, shut up! But it's completely predictable, the story's a rip-off, and just it isn't as good as what it's ripping off. <laughs> Sorry to say. In the end, all the Secret Life of Pets shows is that Illumination Studios is looking like it's going to be a whole lot more like Blue Sky Studios and not like DreamWorks, like it's trying to be. So in the end, I'm going to be giving The Secret Life of Pets a... 4.5 out of 10, just below average. This is just a typical movie. I might put it even lower if it wasn't for the animation being so good. It's just, this is a movie that you show your kids. Okay, this is not a movie that you can pop and enjoy yourself. I mean, there's good animation, but not really great characters. There's some funny moments, but not all the jokes hit home. It's just a... Eh, type of movie that I think it's going to be absorbed and then forgotten about just as quickly. So thanks for watching everybody. I'm Lazy99. Have a nice day. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel and wait for more coming soon.